Oh, hi everyone. Hi, sorry. I've got the camera for some reason turned the wrong way round. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining me. This is only a quick live. Hi Margaret. Hi Sally. Thank you. <coughs> it's only a quick live and I've wrote a couple of things down because normally, hi Tracy, normally whenever I do a live um, I always come off and think, oh I meant to tell everybody that and uh, I generally forget so I apologise for that. Uh, firstly, what I wanted to say to you all, hi Emma, hi Keith, hi Freya, Rosemary, thank you for joining. One of the things I wanted to do was send a massive thank you to all of you that shared the boys documentary part one. Because of you and other people that made sure that documentary got out, because as you know I am shadow banned, hi Perry, we have received over a quarter of a million views on Facebook alone. A quarter million views. Hi Sharon, hi Carl. So I'm, I'm so humbled, I'm so grateful that everyone did that and shared that documentary. And it's across many other platforms on my own YouTube channel. It's not far off 60,000 on there as well. Um, so it's been phenomenal. And the reaction I've been getting is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And to anyone who has uh, sent me their details, sent me private messages, I will get back to you all. Um, I just, I'm on so many platforms that it's hard for me to get to the messages quite quickly. It just takes me a while, but I will get to you and I will respond to you. Hi, Irene from Canada. I know you always watch. Thank you. Brilliant to everyone else, Tracy. You know, not just me. If it wasn't for your support, and you lot sharing this documentary, people wouldn't see what happened to our boys. And it's not just our boys. I say it all the time. Thank you, Ray. I really appreciate that. It's not just our boys. Our boys are not an isolated case. Getting the truth through to people is so hard because we're blocked at every angle. We're blocked on social media, we're blocked by the so, uh, mainstream media and we're also blocked by the majority of the alternative media that pretend to you that they're the alternative media and they're not. They're no, just another arm of the mainstream media that are out here to keep fooling us time and time again. So I wanted to thank you for that. The other one thing I wanted to clarify, what I've had a lot of messages on, so I'm just going to quickly clarify it for you. The altercation in the garage, thank you Paul, the altercation in the garage was after the incident happened. Just a couple of minutes after the incident had happened was the altercation in the garage, not before the incident so it was when those in the car got out and ran and then two brave boys that were narrowly missed by that car our boys friends got up hi Lee got up ran after them and apprehended one of them in the full court of the SO garage and if you go back to the documentary you see that the night manager lies about that incident lies about it also, I want to inform you that also what I did was I sent that documentary to over a hundred reporters in the UK just to see what I'd get back because as you know, uh, they've defamed my character, they've character assassinated me for the last four years, as many others have done. Now, I sent that, hi Carl, hi Ria. I sent that to over a hundred journalists in the UK to see what I would get back. Now I'm going to inform you of what I did get back, which I've got here and printed off as evidence. So I sent to over a hundred reporters and uh, 
there's all the email addresses. I received two replies, two replies to that, to that documentary. And the first reply was, can I take them off my mailing list? That was the first reply. Can I take them off their mailing list? And that came from Reuters. No questions about the documentary. No asking about facts. No asking about evidence. Can I take them off my mailing list? The second reply that I received was saying to me that they don't commission pieces and if I have a story on a coffee shop I could then get in touch with their colleague. A story on a coffee shop. When I've just sent them documentary with evidence, enough evidence in that to the murder of our three boys. But seeing as the mainstream media were part of the cover-up and colluded with the police, because we spoke to them enough times, I didn't expect anything else. I didn't even expect a reply, but those were the two replies I received. Um, you know, as I've said before, to me, my son's been murdered twice by those in the car and by the police. Because our boy's story goes deeper than I've informed you so far because I can only give you so much as I've said before I would love to give you everything regarding the murders of our boys but I just can't because I need to get back into court I need to get what is just for our boys and I need to hold people accountability for what they did because if I don't if I don't this will continue continue and the police are not what people think they are they are just here to enforce everything on you same to you Alfie everything onto you is about enforcement it's not about protection and they use the media to make up stories to make police at times look like heroes they're not it's fake it's fake to play with your emotions each and every time, each and every time. How dare they tell us, the police, that all three boys died instantly when two didn't, one of them being my son. It's evident in their own paperwork. How dare they play God, judge and jury? Because they're none of that. And they're certainly not gods and never will be. There is no place for evil in this world. No place for it. And we shouldn't have to suffer it. But that's what they make us do. They make us suffer each and every time. I put a post up yesterday um, from The Sun on how they portrayed me. But they did the same to Hillsborough, and we all know that. And the majority of people in Liverpool, I don't know if it still is sold there, but the majority of people in Liverpool don't buy that paper. paper. And really, we should have learned by that. But we don't learn. We don't learn. And how much more are people going to take? How much more? The police are the biggest criminal network in this country, and they don't investigate nothing. They don't investigate nothing. One of my friends, is, um, who's become a dear friend, and I know she's watching this right now, she's gone through a lot. She's gone through a lot over the last year, year and a half, and she has had to push and push and push and push to get anything done in her case. And it's serious. It's serious because there could be a serious outcome to that if she doesn't do that. And that's the same all across the board, all across this country. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate it. Thank you. By them doing what they did and covering up our boy's case, they are condoning it. 
and it will continue to happen because they condone it and they encourage it. But what they actually do is when people do wrong, and I'm talking about serious crimes here, when people do wrong, what do they do? Why do they have so many police informers, so many trolls, so many common purpose people? Why do they have so many? So many infiltrators in movements. So many infiltrators up front leading these movements. How do they get so many? i tell you how they get them. These people do crimes, sickening crimes. And they're let off to work for them. And that's how they do it. They're let off and they work for them. They gave a fake charge on who they claim was the driver in our boy's case. A fake charge to lie to you all. Do SO15 and Met Intel all go to the scene of every so-called accident? No, they don't, people. They don't. So I wrote this down to make sure that I wouldn't forget anything because uh, the majority of times I do. And as for the Met Police, you're cowards. You're weak. You have no soulless. You now have no strength in your soul. And not only were you complicit in the murder of my son, George and Harry and many others, you're aiding your own demise and you're aiding your family and your children's own demise. How do you go home at night and look in their faces? How do you do that? Tony, I'm very sorry to hear that you was attacked by police, but it's not surprising because it's not a small amount of police that are corrupt. It's endemic and it needs to change. They need reforming. They need to do the job that we think we're, they're pay, being paid for. And that isn't the job they're doing. Absolutely, Kim, all corrupt and beast, absolutely. And as we all know, they're not fit for purpose. They're not fit for purpose at all. So I wanted to come on quickly, just let you know that I'm still here to thank you all for sharing our boy's story. And also know that the other thing that's, that's reverse psychology is when they tell you that someone has got 10 years or eight years and you look online on the law pages and find out the very next day that's three years and then more for good behavior it's all reverse psychology all of it these are not the years that people think they are getting and then these criminals are used because they sell their souls they're weak they're cowards and they go out and they become police informers and grasses and work for them so that they control everything. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Now, next week is four years. Four years of fighting. It'd be the fourth anniversary on the 26th of January. And from four days in, we've been trying to expose the murders of Josh, Harry and George four days in and it's four years next week now I've tried to follow their processes of writing to this person writing to that having meetings with the MPs writing to the courts buying the transcription we even had to pay for the transcription of the old Bailey of being there which was 400 odd pounds. We had to pay for that to get that. So we have tried to follow every process that they have. And I still follow it in the background by writing to the right people and you just get ignored. So for them to be shocked at me turning up at the CPS or turning up at the coroner's court, why wouldn't I? 
Why wouldn't I when I'm being ignored? We well, haven't heard the last from me. Next week is four years. Four years of fighting. Four years of telling you the truth. Four years of doing lives. Four years of doing posts. Four years of sending over a thousand emails and letters in the background trying to fight for our boys trying to tell everybody what's going on in this country and that our boys are not an isolated case we are not the third biggest cover up in this country there are many I get enough stories sent to me by people who are suffering I see people almost daily that are suffering in one way or another and it isn't right it is wrong it is wrong and everyone needs to start saying about it how wrong it is tell your family tell your friends spread the word because we are being stopped and they are trying to stop the truth getting through Tony I tried that you know I was always brought up to earn your own money raise your own money and everything else and back in 2018 I tried to go fund me so that we could get help for a private prosecution because the criminals get legal aid one of the murderers got legal aid and they said we weren't entitled to legal aid to fight back that is how they do it so they can do anything they want to you knowing that you don't have the money to fight back so I asked another family member <coughs> if they would do the GoFundMe because I knew I would struggle to share it we're all in the same boat. We're all working class people and we all struggle. And it's a hard, it's a hard life work-wise, bringing up family, working. Many of us can't even afford holidays bringing them up because we have to work because so much of your wages are taken by the parasites, aren't they? While they sit drinking champagne in their ivory towers and everyone out here is suffering so we tried that back in 2018 uh, I made up the GoFundMe page I think I shared it once then everyone else you know kindly started sharing it um, the, the, that then um, there was a certain date that that gets stopped I don't know how it works a second GoFundMe was uh, made it was closed down and everyone paid the money back because it was getting reported as a scam things like that as they do as they do I speak out so you know we're gonna get these attacks um, and then on the 22nd of December 2018 I stopped funding altogether because I was getting lied about so since then sorry, since then I've just been trying to learn the law myself. Well, not the law, the legal, because there is a difference between the two. It's not my law. It's not my law. It's not how I was brought up. I was brought up with values and morals, yeah, and the commandments. My schooling was all Church of England school, and we was taught only good things. To care about your neighbour to care about each other don't do something to someone else what you wouldn't do want done to you that's what I was taught that's what I was installed in me the English way of values and morals and good men stood up when there was a wrongdoing good men anyway that's enough for me going on um, I just wanted to thank you all and I can't, Royston. I'm so humbled and grateful because I know how hard it is for everybody out here, especially what you've had to face the last two years as well with so many people losing their businesses and everything else. Stop fearing, people. Stop fearing. That's how you're controlled. Through fear. Don't fear. It's not in our blood to fear. It's not in our blood. It's not. Our ancestors' story is our story. We are not meant to fear. Anyway, thank you everyone for listening. Um, I'm sorry if I've gone on a bit. 
I just wanted to come on and merely thank you all for what you have done in sharing that documentary for Josh, Harry and George. It means so much. We're so proud that so far we have over a quarter of million views on Facebook alone. On Facebook alone. So thank you everyone. Listen, take care and you will see me again soon and a lot more from me this year. Take care.